Video games really are an amazing form of media because not only can you get incredible stories and memorable characters and haunting atmosphere and beautiful visuals, but you can also get that level of interactivity with the gameplay. And when all those elements combine with the gameplay so that they work hand in hand, it gives you an experience that no other medium out there could possibly tackle. But there are also those times where one of those two parts of the equation are working wonderfully where they are banging on all cylinders and it's providing you with everything you could possibly want. And the other half of that equation drops the ball so hard that your brain can't even comprehend it. You can't even come to terms with how something could succeed so well in one regard, but then fail so spectacularly in the other. Today we're talking about Observation, everyone, a brand new game from Devolver Digital, yes, the second one that we have talked about this week, and is from the same team that brought us Stories Untold, a very ominous and mysterious horror game that came out a few years ago and really took the indie scene by storm. This was their follow-up, so a lot of people were looking at this, wondering what they were going to do to top their last game, and in some ways, they did absolutely top their last game. However, as I said... This is not a game where I can come in here and praise everything. But part of me really wants to praise everything. But I can't. Let's go ahead and talk about what the game is. Basically, you play as Sam, which is an onboard AI system on this space station. And the space station was sent out to hover just above Earth's atmosphere, but then something happened. Everything went dark. Your system went offline. And when you get rebooted, there's only one member of your staff still on board. So the rest of this game is you and Emma, the one lone survivor on this space station, trying to figure out what the heck happened. And I will not go into any more details, I will not spoil any part of this game for you, but let me just say it constantly surprised me. There were great twists around every single corner. The atmosphere that they created on this abandoned space station, it really feels like you are a tiny camera just floating around in space. It really feels like you are exploring an empty space station, but not in the haunted dead space way. No, more in a realistic way, but because they were able to capture that sense of realism so well, it made it even creepier to me. Then, of course, as I said, there are several twists, and there were many times throughout the course of this game in which my jaw just dropped. I had no idea what to expect next, but I constantly wanted to find out. Or at least, I would have wanted to find out if it were not for the fact that this game is one of the worst controlled games that I have played I was going to say all year, but no, it's definitely the worst controlled game that I've played all year. I really have to go into my mental Rolodex here. I have to scroll back a while to find a game that handled this poorly. For a large chunk of this game, Sam is inside the ship itself, meaning you basically just teleport from one camera to another. You can go to a big map and check out every single room that you can go to, and once you're inside that room, you can choose which camera you want to be in, then you have to zoom in on specific items there in the world in order to gather certain pieces of information, and also to be able to take over certain objects or other computers inside your system, so that that way you can turn things on, open up hatches, re-establish power in inside of the space station. So in a way, it's like a puzzle game because you do have to assemble these different pieces of information together and then figure out what you have to do with that information in order to be able to turn certain things on or off again. But it's also got kind of a Where's Waldo aspect to it because you have to look around every single room to find the specific bits of information that you need. And one thing that I do really enjoy about this game is that there is definitely a story of what was happening with the crew, and you can find laptops or notes all around the ship that lets you piece together little bits of the story in your head. There's even a couple of secret ones that you have to go way out of your way to find, and I did not find every single one of them, but I really get this feeling that if you found enough of them, then you could actually start piecing the bits of the story together. And I mean that literally, because sometimes you will have to give yourself an upgrade. In order to get that upgrade, you have to find certain pieces of information in the world, and then you have to go into your big computer brain and link those bits together, so that way you can open up some new path for yourself. I feel like 
there's an option to do that with the story as well that I didn't uncover. It just gives me that feeling, but it really made me want to find as much information as I possibly could. Except that searching for these bits of information can be so frustrating. It's not like you look out at the room and the stuff that you can interact with is highlighted. No, they wanted this to look realistic, meaning you will have to get your little monitor specifically right smack dab on top of the thing that you can interact with in order for it to tell you that you can interact with it. And because of that, there were several times in which I just looked at the screen and went, I've done everything. I've done everything in this room. What else is there to possibly do? And it turns out the thing I needed to do was about half an inch to the right of where I just was. You have to scan through every single inch of every single room that you're in in order to find what you have to do for your objective at times. And that's when you know what to do for your objective. This is the thing. You are playing as this super intelligent computer onboard AI system that is working on this space station. You were built specifically to run this space station. You've been working with the people on this space station for several months now. So you all know each other. You all know the layout of the ship. They're going to tell you all this information that you need to do. Here's the thing though. I am not Sam. I am Aaron. And Aaron has not been on this ship this entire time. Aaron is not a supercomputer who knows every piece of jargon that you are going to say to me about what I need to do next. So there would be so many times that they would say, all right, we need you to do this, Sam. We need you to activate this thing. And I would go, I don't know what that is. And occasionally you would be able to press the R3 button. I was playing this on the PlayStation, which by the way, if you have the choice between playing this on the PlayStation or playing it on the PC and you don't really have a preference, choose the PC. I prefer playing stuff on the PlayStation, I prefer consoles, but this thing was made to be played on the PC. I can only imagine how much easier this thing has to be when you have access to a mouse. But there would be those times where I could hit R3 and it would tell me the room I had to go to, and I'll at least give them this, they would allow me to have Emma repeat back to me the instructions as many times as I want her to, but once I was in that room, I wouldn't know what I was looking for, so I would have to scan the entire room. Then when I found it, it would typically be some kind of a... I don't really want to call it a puzzle. Because puzzles kind of require skill. These really require you to just basically type in there the thing that you have found. So you have to scan the entire room, find the thing, then you basically just type that into the computer itself. And that's kind of it. Or, you'll have to type it in there, and then flip switches in certain ways and rearrange numbers in a certain way, but they never once really make it clear to you what you need to do with these numbers. I took so long on some of these puzzles, just going all around trying to figure out what the hell I was supposed to do on these, and I thought to myself, this is taking me forever. I'm probably going to come in last place among everyone who tries to finish this game, I went on howlongtobeat.com, and at the moment it says it takes about five hours to beat this game. I beat this thing in four and a half hours. I did this thing faster than the average player took on this thing, and yet, it still took me so long to just sit there and go, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Not, I'm confused by this puzzle. No, I don't know what the instructions are. You basically just handed me a whole bunch of big blocks from Ikea, and I don't have that manual there in front of me. I don't know what goes into this part here. They expect you to know this. And as I play this, it really hits me. It really feels to me like this was a game where no one tested this other than the developers. I think that because this was a small indie team, the developers made this, and then they tested it themselves to know if the thing worked, and I'll give them this, it works. There were no problems, no bugs in this thing. However, it feels like the people who tested this thing already knew in their heads the answer to every single problem. They knew exactly where to go. They knew exactly where to find what they were looking for. They knew exactly how to activate every little thing in here. They need to hand this off to just some poor schmuck. They need to hand this off to just some poor video game Joe out there and just say, hey, you enjoy stuff like this. Tell us what you think about this. Because almost every single review I've read of this thing has been, it's so wonderfully haunting, and the story is so engaging, and oh, it was terrifying at moments. And I agree with all that. I agree wholeheartedly with all that. 
but everybody comes back around on those controls. Everybody comes back around on those controls and just says, Oh yeah, these puzzles are terrible. They are the worst. Okay, I'm exaggerating. Not everyone says terrible. I know a lot of people out there actually did really enjoy the positives in here so much that they overlooked the problems that they had with the controls. But I haven't run into anyone who didn't have problems with the controls. And it's a shame because whenever this story got going, whenever there was a moment when something was happening, I was there. I was in it. I was engaged. I couldn't wait to see where this went. And then those controls kicked in again. And I just kind of sat there and went, Oh, come on. Just, just, do, just do this. Just please. I just want to do this thing. Just, I would like... To make this thing happen. Oh, I don't- wait, am I even trying to do the right thing? I don't know what's happening here. And it's not like they're even complicated things, they just don't explain to you what the thing is that you're supposed to do. There was a moment in which, after I found some coordinates, which that took a while to figure out what I was even looking for, but after I found these coordinates, I had to then punch them into this program, and then I had to link up Emma with the ability to communicate with the people we were trying to send a message to, so I punched in the code, then I just hit some switches until I found Emma, and then Emma was now active, and I just sat there and went, okay, now what? What do I press now? I, do I, do I activate this thing over here? That doesn't look like a button. That's the other problem of all this. You're looking at a big computer screen, and many times, you don't know what is a button and is not a button. You don't know what you can and cannot press many times. Yes, if you press a button on your controller, then when you scan your little cursor over an item, it will tell you if you can press it, but that's just an extra step for no reason. I don't want to go through the entire game holding down that switch in order to just give this big filter over everything I'm looking at just to know if I can or cannot do something in here. But yeah, in that one specific puzzle, I clicked on Emma, then I didn't know what else to click, so I just started clicking random things and nothing happened. And then I eventually discovered, oh, I had to hit that first random thing I hit about three times in order for Emma to get that signal out. Why? That's kind of how I feel about all the puzzles in this game. I don't even like calling them puzzles. They feel more like busy work. They feel more like, okay, find this thing. All right, there's a code on that thing. Put that code into this press buttons enough times for something to happen. That doesn't really require any brain power. That doesn't really require any skills. There's really no challenge to it. It's really just find this thing until you're done and then put the number you saw into this thing. The only real challenge that comes from it is when it doesn't explain to you well enough what it is that you're supposed to do. And that's not really a challenge in terms of gameplay, that's a challenge in terms of design. I feel like the best example of the pros and the cons of this game working together at the same time is there are a few moments in which Sam has to go inside this little sphere ball that can push itself around the ship. But you can also go outside of the ship, and there's a moment in which you have to go outside and find someone, or there's a moment in which you have to go outside and assess the damage that has taken place to your space station, and you go out of there, and now you are in space, and it actually feels incredible. It feels like you are outside of a space station. The sound design in here is, in, is absolutely stunning. I don't have words to describe how good the sound design in here is. Uh, the graphics look fantastic, especially for an indie game. They look so darn good in here. And the feeling of just floating around space, it feels like you are out there in space. They nailed it. And you get that sense of isolation. You get that sense of being alone out there in space. You get that feeling like if you just drift too far off in one distance, you're just gone. You're just out there in the infinite nothing. And that's exactly the feeling this game was going for. And they nailed that. However, as I said, you have to assess the damage on the ship, or find someone there, on the ship, outside of the ship. And it's a big ship, and you're a little tiny ball, and everything kind of looks the same on this ship when you first get out there. And they'll say something like, yes, go over to the Russian pod and examine the damage that happened over there. I don't know which pod is... What? Could you- could you please just give me like that little line on the ground, like in Dead Space? 
could you give me that line on the ground that just goes bloop bloop and it just shows me where to go? I'm a computer. Shouldn't I be able to, you know, have directions installed inside of me? And there are ways of maneuvering around while you're inside the cabin when you're Sam in the little pod. You can actually place a waypoint and it will show you what direction to go. But that's actually kind of rare that you actually have to be inside the ship as Sam in the little tiny pod. Uh, so that doesn't even really come up all that much. Whenever you are Sam outside the ship, you're just completely lost. Whenever you're Sam inside the computers and you're inside the cameras, you're never entirely sure what you're supposed to be doing in there. So basically, you're just waiting until the story kicks back in. The best way that I can sum this game up is I can say, it's an amazing game to experience, but it's an awful game to play. Uh, so yeah, if I had to grade the story and the premise and the acting and the setting and the atmosphere and the tone and the imagination, if I had to judge all that, it would be a 9 out of 10. Solid, solid 9 out of 10. If I had to grade the controls, it'd be a 3. And in all honesty, I think I'm being a little bit generous on that. The only reason it's not any lower is because Towards the end, you do kind of understand certain bits of this, but then again, they constantly throw other elements at you that you don't understand. There is one puzzle in here that I swear to you, you had to find the specific ports in this big circuit, and you had to turn off the specific circuits connecting them, so you had to find on this little sheet of paper what the actual circuit was, so you had to then identify that circuit, then you had to turn off the circuit breaker that was connected to it so you would find what you need click on that then you would have to click on a number pad and enter in what it was that was connecting it and i found the thing that was connecting it i hit that didn't do anything i hit what was another thing that was connecting to it didn't do anything i hit another thing that was connected to it didn't do anything i literally just guessed through all the numbers on this keypad until I got right. And after I saw the number that was correct, I looked around that entire circuit board. I did not see that number connected to this thing at all. I still, to this day, have no idea how that problem is solved. I just did it, and I didn't question it, because at that point, I was fed up, and I wanted to get through this. So yes, it's a three, because you do start to understand how it works at certain points. Then they throw in their different things that I honestly just, I, I, it's beyond me, and I'm too flustered to even talk about it anymore. So, a 9 and a 3, you even that out, you get a 6 out of 10. And man, it's so weird giving this thing a 6 out of 10, because part of me is mad that I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Because the atmosphere, and the setting, and the story, that deserves so much more. But the gameplay is so awful, it deserves so much less. So I'm mad for two reasons. No one is happy about this thing. We're all going to bed without any dinner tonight. This was awful. Uh, watch other people play through this. And watch them get frustrated at. Don't play through this yourself, especially because it's 25 bucks. And as I said, it took me like four and a half hours to play this thing. And yeah, it's a small indie team and they worked hard on the graphics and all that stuff. And it's a great premise and the sound design is so good, but... Yeah, for 25 bucks, man. Hand this off to some people who aren't yourselves to test this thing. Yeah, it's frustrating. But that was it. That was another one of our quick reviews. We have another one coming up later this week for something that is very different from Observation. Uh, so make sure that you click that subscribe button to stick around to see that. Ring that bell so that way YouTube will notify you when the next video goes up. And you can always follow me on Twitter at Professor Thorgy or at Thorgy's Arcade. And you can always follow me on Twitch at Professor Thorgy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye.